Never before have we seen the universe with such clarity. Neil deGrasse Tyson now says the debate in physics is over. The latest James Webb discovery finally proves the truth, and a crisis has erupted in science. Those who are not prepared to throw outdated theories overboard and turn to new possibilities about the true nature of the universe will have a bad hand in science in the future. The James Webb Telescope is now opening the doors to a whole new science and may even reveal the infinity of the universe. James Webb is one of the most remarkable scientific instruments we humans have ever created. Thanks to this space telescope, we can see so far back in time that we can almost look back to when space is said to have been born. But something is wrong. Either these galaxies were something like cosmic early developers, or the theory of the Big Bang is wrong. Just imagine, galaxies that were probably just in their infancy appear like mature, adult galaxies. James Webb found more than a dozen galaxies 200 to 300 million years after the Big Bang that were highly complex, structured, and full of stars in a way that astronomers have come to expect only from very old galaxies. These discoveries shed light on epochs of the universe that were previously in the dark, and they put the foundations of cosmology to the test. James Webb has triggered a scientific crisis. A quote from Tyson, It's a crisis. Let's reiterate. The standard model of cosmology is a theoretical framework that describes the development and structure of the universe from its beginning to the present day. For decades, this model has served as a compass based on the fundamental laws of classical physics, Albert Einstein's relativity equations, and observations in the current cosmos. But the data provided by JWST reveals phenomena that lie outside the predictions of this model, and now scientists are facing disaster. A large part of the global community of astronomers, cosmologists, and physicists agreed that the universe began with a Big Bang and has continued to expand from that point ever since. In between, there was an epoch of darkness in which there were no stars in the young universe. Then, the first light sources came into play and gradually stars formed, first loose clusters, and then complex galaxies like our Milky Way. Now, you are probably wondering, how researchers were able to determine the Big Bang when there was no light at all. No one was around, and it was clear that no one would ever see this event. They took the picture of all the current phenomena, such as the movements of galaxies and the action of certain forces. Then, they calculated the scenario back to a starting point. The catch, however, is that no one knew for sure if there ever was a beginning. A quote from Tyson. We didn't know the exact age or size of the universe because our estimates could be off by a factor of two. The scientists were therefore aware that all the values and sizes of their theories were prone to error. Nevertheless, everything still fitted into the picture quite well, until James Webb came along. Now the physicists and astronomers' house of cards are collapsing, and what has long been sold to us as truth is now turning out to be false. Big Bang the evidence was always missing. Did you know that the theories of the Big Bang, the expansion of the universe, and the age of the universe were nothing more than estimates and model calculations? Nevertheless, these theories are considered the central pillars of modern cosmology. In fact, the ideas were also supported by a multitude of observations and scientific findings, but there were also warning signs that scientists consistently overlooked. The theories offered a reasonably coherent picture of the origin and evolution of the universe, and some of the ideas were also confirmed by various independent measurements, but by no means all of them. The Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation, or CMB for short, is the classic when it comes to confirming the idea of the Big Bang and the expansion of the universe. Discovered in 1965 by Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson, this radiation, which is still omnipresent in space today, was interpreted as the afterglow of the Big Bang. The radiation was seen as a kind of photographic imprint of the universe, created when the universe was only 380,000 years old, and when it became cool enough for electrons and protons to combine to form neutral atoms. The almost perfect uniformity of the CMB across the entire sky, with tiny temperature fluctuations, apparently not only confirmed the Big Bang, but also provided crucial information about the composition and the evolution of the universe. Everything looked coherent, and the discovery of the CMB was long regarded as the proof of the theory put forward by George Lemaitre. In 1927, the Belgian priest and astrophysicist observed that distant galaxies were moving away from us. 
He made this discovery by analyzing the redshift in the light of these galaxies. From these observations, Lemet concluded that the universe was expanding from a single, extremely dense and hot point. He presented the idea of an expanding universe that originated from a primordial atom from which all matter in the universe was formed. In 1929, Edwin Hubble provided the first direct evidence for the expansion of the universe by observing that galaxies are moving away from us, their speed being proportional to their distance. This observation became known as Hubble's Law and was taken as direct evidence of a dynamic, expanding universe. The determination of the age of the universe was based on the measurement of the expansion rate, or the Hubble constant, and on the observation of the oldest known stars at the time. However, James Webb has now observed stars and galaxies that tell a completely different story. The standard model has reached its limits, and it is now clear that something was wrong with the previous considerations. It was basically foreseeable, but for a long time, most scientists did not want to hear about the criticisms of the old ideas. There were persistent uncertainties and discrepancies in the precise measurements of the Hubble constant. Different methods, such as the observation of Cepheids and supernovae in nearby galaxies, compared to the values derived from the CMB, led to slightly different results. These discrepancies were actually an indication of an incomplete understanding of cosmic dynamics. Measurement error. They didn't want to believe it. It sounds crazy, but the indications that the previous theories could not be correct were always there. In addition to the discrepancy between the various measurements of the expansion rate of the universe already mentioned, precise measurements of the CMB itself always raised questions that were difficult to reconcile with the standard model. The subtle fluctuations in the CMB, which were mapped with unprecedented accuracy by satellite missions such as Planck, clearly indicated an early complexity of the universe. In particular, the scale dependence of these fluctuations provided evidence for phenomena that could not be explained by classical cosmology. If we look at quantum physics, the discrepancies become even greater. Phenomena such as the quantum fluctuations in the early universe and the indications of the existence of several realities side by side show that the determinism of the old theories is possibly a dead end. It is precisely this dead end that scientists, whom Neil deGrasse Tyson calls old-timers, are now stuck in. A hard time has dawned for the old-timers of science, said the astrophysicist in an interview, meaning that the old ways of thinking will no longer hold. James Webb shows us that something very different in the early universe than previously assumed, and the discussion about the correctness of the old standard model of astrophysics is now over. The old theories are no longer tenable, but hardly anyone wants to say it so clearly. Are we approaching infinity? Could the biggest flaw in the standard model of cosmology lie in the assumption of a universe that must have a beginning and an end? Could the inconsistencies and the search for new physics actually open the long overdue door to a truly infinite universe or even a multiverse? There is growing evidence that we do not live in a temporarily or spatially closed universe, but in a multiverse. The inflationary theories and string theory show that we may have overlooked much more. Although direct evidence for the infinity of the universe or the existence of a multiverse remains elusive, these concepts score points in other respects. String theory is currently the only coherent explanation that can reconcile the world of the smallest particles with the laws of the universe of large-scale phenomena. However, this only works if we allow for further dimensions that we do not yet know. The old-timers among scientists have always rejected such ideas. Supposedly, the evidence is lacking, but as James Webb has now impressively shown us, the evidence for the theories that have been accepted as truths for almost a century was also lacking. Will we see the Big Bang after all? Something that most people overlook is the fact that now our chances of looking back to 13.8 billion years ago are increasing. James Webb looks back 13.5 billion years and shows us that there must have been large galaxies back then. These galaxies were at least several million years old at that time, so there was already light in the universe at epochs very close to the magical 13.8 threshold. Realize for a moment that scientists used to think that the universe was only dark for a long time, an assumption that made it completely impossible to ever look back to the Big Bang. We can only collect and interpret traces of light or 
rely on radiation sources such as the CMB. But if these very old galaxies now show us that there were already many stars when the universe was supposedly still young, then we must still be able to find older galaxies. We are slowly approaching the exact point in time that is supposed to have been the beginning. If 13.8 billion years ago, ready-made galaxies were already shining brightly, we know for sure that the Big Bang could not have happened. It is only a matter of time before we can do this. It's possible that James Webb will present more and more images of even older galaxies, and science will gain even more clues as to what really happened in the past of the universe. The shocking findings to date were drawn by researchers from a single image that James Webb took at the very beginning of his mission. The deep image was just the start, so to speak, and we can look forward to seeing what new fascinating facts we get about the universe when James Webb turns his eyes once again to the alleged beginning of time. Roger Penrose There is a certain sense in which, I would say, the universe has a purpose. It's not just there by chance. The brilliant physicist Sir Roger Penrose is certain. String theory is wrong and dark matter does not exist. Penrose finds his very own approach to the elementary question of physics, what the true structure of the universe is, and he is one of the few scientists of our time to find coherent answers to the question of a deeper meaning or purpose behind the apparent randomness of cosmic events. While string theory strives for a unified theory of all forces, the mystery of dark matter and energy remains unsolved to this day. In this field of tension, the exceptional scientist Roger Penrose thinks far beyond conventional boundaries and shows us the possibility of a universe full of meaning and mystery. Roger Penrose I think the problem with string theory is that there is no connection to observations. I'm probably taking too strong a view here, but in my opinion, it's largely driven by mathematics, which is not in itself an objection as far as I'm concerned. Much of what I do is driven by math. But the problem with string theory is that it's supposed to be a theory about how the world works, and if the number of spatial dimensions is just wrong, I can't take it seriously. String theory postulates that the fundamental building blocks of the universe are not point-like particles, but one-dimensional strings. These strings vibrate at different frequencies, creating the variety of elementary particles observed. The theory was once the celebrated unification of the four fundamental forces in nature. Gravity, electromagnetism, strong and weak nuclear forces came together here for the first time in a coherent way and in a larger context. String theory practically unites astrophysics with particle physics, but there is a catch. The formulas only work if we assume far more than the known four dimensions. Roger Penrose is one of the biggest opponents of the theory, while another physics star, the American Michio Kaku, sees it as the only coherent field theory. Penrose is not so bothered by the many other dimensions. For the Britain, String theory is unacceptable despite its mathematical sophistication because it cannot be tested empirically. Penrose argues that for a scientific theory to be considered valid, it must make testable predictions and be confirmed by observations or experiments. String theory, however, has not yet provided any testable predictions that could be tested by the means of current experimental physics. This leads to the question of whether string theory is actually a physical theory, or rather a mathematical thought experiment. Penrose is similarly critical of a much more significant variable in previous cosmological models. In the debate about dark matter, Penrose also takes an astonishingly critical stance. Dark matter was virtually invented by scientists in order to explain certain astronomical observations, such as the rotation speeds of galaxies and gravitational lensing effects. These phenomena did not match the amount of visible matter in the universe, and so the theory of invisible dark matter was born. In theory, dark matter is a form of matter that cannot be observed directly as it does not emit or reflect electromagnetic radiation. According to previous models, however, it makes up a significant proportion of the total mass of the universe. Penrose argues that the assumption of an invisible, undetectable substance, which is supposed to make up a large part of the universe, is more of a tentative solution than a well-founded scientific theory.
Penrose favors alternative explanations based on the modification of the theory of gravity rather than speculating on the existence of an unknown form of matter. The Nobel Prize winner's views, therefore, pose a real challenge to conventional cosmology. His critique is not only a rejection of certain theories, but also a call for more rigorous scientific methodology and a more open discussion about the foundations of our understanding of the universe. Penrose emphasizes that science must always be open to new ideas and revisions, especially when confronted with the limits of our knowledge. In practical terms, the physicist is saying that we cannot base our worldview on assumptions. If scientists do not know something, then they have to admit it and go back to the point where knowledge is backed up by observations and sound evidence. Modern astrophysics, on the other hand, has built an entire worldview on the existence of a substance for which there is no evidence. And if string theory were to be recognized one day, it would be similar. Until these dimensions are seen or evidence for their existence is found, we cannot consider them a serious theory of science in the eyes of Penrose. Sir Roger Penrose is a genius. Penrose is currently making a big splash on the physics star circuit. In Great Britain, Every child knows the scientist. Penrose had his own TV programs on astrophysics, is the author of many renowned books, and one of the country's great thinkers. In addition to the Nobel Prize, his extraordinary achievements earned the Britain an elevation to the peerage of Queen Elizabeth. Penrose was born in Colchester in 1931 and studied mathematics and physics. He is particularly well known for his work in the theory of relativity and cosmology especially for his research into black holes. In collaboration with Stephen Hawking, Penrose developed important theorems on singularities within the framework of the general theory of relativity. This work has fundamentally changed our understanding of black holes and the origin of the universe. The concept of Penrose diagrams, named after him, is based on Penrose. This innovative method depicts the structure of the space-time continuum in the general theory of relativity. With the Penrose tiles, the thinker's work even reached the sciences of crystallography, and his work led to the theory of quasi-crystals. Penrose is not limited to mathematics and physics. This man is a scientist who wants to understand the universe in its entirety, including the metaphysical aspects. That is why he is not afraid to talk about topics such as consciousness or the meaning of the universe. Penrose actively worked with brain researchers on the question of whether the universe is something that is created by our consciousness. His book, The Emperor's New Mind, links human consciousness with quantum processes in the brain. Again, the exceptional scientist was not only interested in presenting some mathematically reasonably coherent concepts. He wanted to prove that these connections exist and set about practical research. Penrose is not just a scientist and thinker who easily blurs the boundaries between mathematics, physics, and philosophy. His ability to simplify complex ideas and make them accessible to a wider audience, and to challenge established dogma, make him in the UK what Michio Kaku is in the US. The Universe and Its Purpose Can you imagine the Pope, a man like Penrose, and a musician like Mozart, sitting around a table and discussing the question of the purpose of the universe? What is a rather abstruse idea today was quite normal in the past. All these disciplines were once practiced in the guise of great thinkers and scientists. Pythagoras was a gifted mathematician and a brilliant musician. For him, music and sound and the universe belonged together. He would have liked the idea of vibrating and sounding strings. Ptolemy of Alexandria was the greatest religious scientist of his time, and at the same time, a mathematician, astronomer, and biologist. Sir Roger Penrose appears in the present day as one of the few polymaths who transcend the boundaries of disciplines and link concepts such as consciousness with theories and religion. His opinion on chance and determinism in modern cosmology is also interesting. Both concepts attempt to explain the existence and nature of the universe. The debate revolves around the question of whether the universe came into being through a series of random events, which is the equivalent of chance, or whether it follows a specific purpose or predetermined order, which would be an expression of determinism. Roger Penrose rejects the idea of a random, purposeless universe. Instead, 
He sees in the complex structure of the universe and in the finely tuned laws of physics, evidence of a deeper order and possibly an underlying purpose. The philosophical implications of Penrose's views are far-reaching. If the universe does indeed follow a purpose or have a deeper order, this raises questions about the nature of that order and the origin of that purposefulness. It could mean that the universe is constructed in a way that not only enables, but perhaps even favors, the emergence of life and consciousness. This perspective effectively says that our human existence is also intentional for a reason, and our role in the universe could be far more than simply being here. In quantum mechanics, the observer of the universe is equal to the creator of reality. In quantum mechanics, it is often argued that the observer plays a crucial role in determining reality. Penrose's studies could prove that consciousness and observation are not just passive processes, but active participants in the creation of reality. Penrose's views on the universe challenge conventional cosmology and provide new coherent approaches. Penrose is also responsible for the groundbreaking theory of the cyclic universe. In it, the physicist scientifically demonstrates that our Big Bang was the subsequent event of a previously extinct universe. Once the life cycle of our universe has reached its end, it collapses and a new Big Bang occurs. This theory could be confirmed by extremely old black holes recently discovered by the James Webb Space Telescope. In Penrose's idea of a cyclical universe, the black giants are pretty much the last thing that remains of an old universe, and they could even play a part in the new birth of a universe. The Future of Physics – What Lies Beyond String Theory and Dark Matter The future of physics is at an exciting turning point. Theoretical physics could move in a completely new direction that goes far beyond the conventional explanatory models for how the universe works. One such direction could be loop quantum gravity, which attempts to describe gravity within the framework of quantum mechanics without resorting to additional dimensions or complex string configurations. Other approaches could focus on developing theories based on the holographic principle or postulating entirely new forms of matter and energy that differ from the traditional notion of dark matter. As Penrose emphasizes, reproducible experiments and real observations must be paramount in the future development of physics. The confirmation or refutation of theories through empirical data is a cornerstone of the scientific method. Roger Penrose has his own vision for the future of his field. He emphasizes the importance of creativity and firmly believes that the future of physics lies in new ideas that push the boundaries of current understanding and still offer deeper insights into the nature of the universe. Penrose has argued for a greater consideration of the role of consciousness in physics and suggested that quantum processes in the brain should be better explored to find connections to the universe and the probable determinism of its creation. If you love amazing videos, subscribe to this channel now.